Okay, look, welcome everybody. I am joined today by Chad McCall and Brad Quintana, 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 Brad Quintana, just like Joe Montana, but Brad. <laughs> uh, two marketing professionals that have uh, built their careers largely on the back end of real estate and the real estate industry. Uh, I know that you've gotten into you've gotten into all kinds of other industries, but you kind of like when I when I look at uh, when I when I learned about you and your and the companies and your and your history, a lot of it comes back to the real estate industries. Uh, so tell me a little bit about yourselves. Uh, tell me about your marketing backgrounds and let's, let's kind of dive in today. Sure, uh, I'll get started. So I'm Brad, I am born and raised in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, I started real estate investing at the age of 19 coming from the fitness industry. So uh, in the fitness industry, network with people, uh, high net worth individuals that were in commercial and, and land development and building and things. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be a manager at a young age, so I had a, a high income coming in. So I uh, ended up investing with some of these guys, which kind of led and eventually led into me getting into investing full time. Uh, when Golds came in and bought out the company that I worked for uh, at the age of 22. So 22 years old, went full time, uh, met this guy a year later, or actually probably within that <laughs> six, months, yeah, yeah, six, six months year. later. And... Uh, the rest is history. Got into all aspects of real estate and uh, took my private money side of it and kind of switched it around and did everything from short, mid, and long-term type investing. So, okay. So, um, so tell me. So, after you formed your partnership together, so tell me how that kind of uh, your partnership has evolved, and uh, and a little bit about what you're doing now. Well, um, you know, me being from North Carolina, I'm not a Salt Lake City native. I'm born and raised in North Carolina. Um, my background is a little bit different when I, when I came into this. I moved to Utah. I was a professional tennis player. So that's why wow. I came out here, you know, all my own tennis club. That was kind of my thing. I'd just been traveling around the world playing tennis and doing some of those things and just getting back to the States and having an opportunity to come to Utah, sight unseen, and getting involved with a tennis facility out here and realizing in late 1998, um, making more money and selling the tennis facility than I ever did teaching lessons and running a tennis club and getting into, you know, starting this partnership. And now we've been running for over, you know, 15 years uh, doing this, man, it was, you know, like the perfect storm, you know, when we just, we lined up that we had the same, you know, values, we had the same, a lot of the same interests. And so, it just, you know, over time, growing our families together and just, and man, uh, the, the, the people that you meet in this, the world uh, that what we've done in, you know, becoming entrepreneurships and, you know, running my own tennis facility, Brad running his own business, you start to gravitate towards like-minded people in that business world. And you start hearing more and more opportunities about what do you do? What are you doing? And the next thing you know, I'm like, sold tennis club. And, you know, I thought of playing tennis would be the, the way to go, but realizing that, man, I made more money in selling a tennis club that I never only had for a couple of years than I ever would have teaching lessons for 10 years. So we just said, there's so much more money in what we do in this, in the real estate world and big ticket. And man, it just it morphed into different entrepreneurships and, you know, being around the circle of so many different people running their own businesses and then they taking what they knew, then they wanted to invest in real estate. And then, you know, we're opening up other companies and we've yeah. opened what, geez, nine different nine companies, different yeah. companies wow. you know, together doing this. And we, you know, yeah, real estate was a, an emphasis of what yeah. we do and a, a big income stream for us. But all these other businesses, yeah. you know, are, they grow at different rates, uh, you know, and then owning a call center yeah. and, you know, but our main business is marketing and entrepreneurship ever since we started, you know, yeah. we market ourselves, we're marketing our properties, we're marketing through other business ventures. And that's been running 15 years now. That's and it's awesome. crazy too, Justin, because when you think of, uh, you know, real estate investors, you don't think of, a, you know, owners that own, you know, clothing companies or athletic training facilities, or, I mean, it's, we're so versed in kind of the way that we've structured our businesses because it's, once you get this core business, we're big advocates of, you know, you can go out there and do other things that you really, really love, you know, like the tennis stuff, like we're big sports guys. So we, we put this athletic training facility together so that we could have, you know, we could kind of be around that stuff. We both coach football. We like do a lot of those types of things what real estate has been kind of the core thing that's allowed us to be able to do yeah. all of these other things. It's really cool when you pursue a passion, like you're, you're pursuing tennis and, and how sometimes it doesn't work out the way you thought it was going to work out, like where you were going to become like a tennis instructor and make it big that way. Uh, but it opened the door to buying a facility, 
and it opened the door to, to finding a whole a whole business inside of that, uh, or at least temporarily inside of that uh, inside of that niche community. So it's cool how that kind of stuff sometimes aligns itself when you're just pursuing your passion, and it's not always what you expect it to be, um, but something comes out from it, and that's that's really cool to hear. So um, so I know so you're doing a lot of marketing now. Now tell me about the businesses that you focus on. Are you focusing on like the small to medium business sector? Are you focusing on enterprise level companies? Who's your target market when you're helping clients to build up uh, their marketing efforts? Um, individuals, you know, individuals that are, are looking at either starting a business. I mean, some of the, some of the investment companies are, I guess you could call them enterprises that are worth seven, eight figures, you know what I mean? And they're looking to get to the next level. So it doesn't matter if they're at the top or they're just barely getting started. Everybody kind of has a path and a startup type marketing, whether it's the startup side of it or the scaling side of it, if they're in the middle, you know, how, how can this business owner not just be a business operator, but be able to scale it to where they can focus on these other things and be able to market this way versus the enterprise guy that's already scaled it, but looking at everything he's done and say, Hey, look, you know, if you use direct mail for this or that, and it dragged people to the website and, and, and they ended up going through this other funnel that we can show you how to build. You know, there's a lot of other things yeah. that coincide with an enterprise versus, you know, just somebody, the startup individual is actually easy to help really. You know what I mean? The, the guy that you have to kind of spend a little bit longer time evaluating their business and figuring out where they're coming from, that takes a little longer. So, but everybody has a path. Everybody has a way to yeah. monetize whatever their business is currently at right now. And I think to add on that, Justin, is it's, you know, we don't get as many of your enterprise level people in the business world because those come through a, a, a more of a qualified funnel and referral base when we work with those individuals. We have so many more people in the pool that are new wanting to start. Let's say it's a person wanting to write their own book or yeah. it's a person that started, you know, doing essential oils and is trying, they want to create a $5,000 a month residual income off of it, you know, so there's people that want to build a network marketing business or people that want to have a passive stream of income. There's people that want full-time income from, from starting out or it could be like we were just talking earlier, like it could be a chiropractor that's wanting to get more clients or opening up a different aspect of their business that they can help with. In all those businesses, we do so much marketing and direct mail and customer retention and gosh, campaigns to the lower level people because that's that world that we play in. I mean, you're talking, you know, tens of thousands of dollars a week and a month yeah. that go into the marketing promoting because that's a bigger pool of people. Our enterprise level people, you know, we don't, it's referral, but they came through knowing from some of the other marketing and stuff that we've done out there. So it's that longer process. But what's really cool is you take those low level people. When I say low level, I mean, let's say a six figure business. When you take them to when they break that seven figure, that's what's really cool. Then they become yeah. that client that you can last. Because I think one of the big things about marketing is it just it's it's retention and how long you can grow with someone and yeah. watching. Like last week, Brad and I were you know we're at a conference where it was only seven, eight, nine figure people, and it was really cool. You know, quite like seven, eight hundred people. You know, and it's all you know entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and looking for growing their business. And one of the biggest things we were all talking about was marketing. Yep. doing more of what we're talking about here with banner seasons right now. It was just yeah. last week. It was really cool. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about banner season. So, um, I mean, I come from the digital marketing background, digital marketing world, and you know, a lot of the, the digital marketing craze is, is about social media. It's about uh, email marketing. It's about, it's about these, um, these did the digital side. But when we're, when we're talking about banner season, we're talking about like a marriage between the digital and the direct mail right. And a lot, you know, for, for a while, it seemed like direct mail was kind of going by the wayside. It was dying. But it, but the reality is that the more that I have kind of experimented with it, I'm sure you're, you're seeing the same results. People still crave that direct, tangible touch of direct mail. And yeah. it still has a ton of value. And it's, it's very memorable when somebody receives something uh, in the mail versus like an email that they may or may not even open because open rates are pretty terrible these days. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I could show you my, my phone right now and I have like 17,000 emails. <laughs> yeah. No joke. And, oh, yeah. and even like RBMs now, ringless voicemails, like, you know, yeah. you, you don't answer your phone as much as you, the auto dialers that are out there that are robot right. dialers. Yeah. You, know, you don't, you just don't answer your phone like you used to. So there's really, those were like the three main ways to actually get in touch with somebody these days, this day and age. And really what it's done is it's decluttered people's mailboxes by all those people doing it that way. So when you're sending direct mail, don't get me wrong, like if you're just sending direct mail and that's it, 
That's really not what you want to do. There's certain marketing techniques that when you are doing direct mail, you have to have some of the things that you're really good at, like the digital marketing funnels that are built to coincide with that digital marketing. They're, they work hand in hand, and I, I believe that's what you're saying. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. How they how they can have kind of a marriage of the two. So there can be like um, the touch points can involve like an email at one point, and then a direct uh, something directly in the mail, or how they how we can kind of uh, combine everything to create a more interactive experience is kind of what I'm thinking. Like for instance, just to give you an idea, so we do this book. This is one of our books right here, Not Seen on TV, Real Estate Investor's Guide. So what I do is I send out direct mail with a free book postcard on it, and then they go ahead and, and to redeem it, they go to the website, and then at that point, they're, they're going through an, an, a digital marketing funnel, right? Yeah. Yep. So, but there has to be a start. But the one thing that I, I love about direct mail marketing is you can't, like once you see it, you see it, it's not like a closed message or something you have to click on and listen to or anything like that. Like it's as simple as just, you know, oh, you just kind of, you're perusing through your mail and then you see this thing that says oh, yeah. free book. You're like, oh cool, what's this? You know what I mean? People always look at those types of things, then it leads you into the next thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Go to this website, go to this funnel, you know what I mean? Type in this, type this in to be able to redeem your free book, so. Well, I think with marketing, the name of the game is always attention, right? I mean, it's always like, where can I get somebody's attention in their eyeballs? And direct mail, you know, you're still getting something physical in the mail and it's not as, um, and there's not as many companies that are doing direct mail as there are that are doing email right now. There, uh, most of the yes. companies are focusing on these, these things that are cheaper for them to do um, and they're thinking kind of short-term mentality. Uh, but by, by saving money, by not doing direct mail, by saving money and only doing email, it leaves an opportunity for other marketers to come in and, and reestablish that market that's kind of been ignored, I think, for a little bit of time now. So let, let's talk about the marketing vault, though. So you, you've kind of partnered, both of you have partnered with Banner Season. You've created something called the marketing vault. Uh, I want to hear about that. And uh, actually, can you tell me a little bit about the about the marketing vault? Uh, maybe for those of if anyone that hasn't doesn't know Banner Season, maybe give a brief uh, a brief explanation of of like what that's doing and how how your service is adjuncting to make that like absolutely incredible. Yeah, uh, Banner Season is it's not it's not just a you know a company that you're focused on just like this mass quantity. What's really cool about it is it all, it goes all the way down to the, the one off touch that you can get yeah. that, that companies don't offer out there. And again, Brad and I've been in this business for so long. And like you said, we, we see where there's a big gap and you mentioned something a little bit earlier, a few seconds ago, you talked about, you know, it being cheaper. You know what I mean? That was the, you know, a word for, cause people eliminated the space. If I can email cheaper, I can do things. That's where it's came in with banner season and combined with us, the marketing vault, we're making it to where you can consistently do it at more affordable, you know, inexpensive and that no one else can touch uh, with what this whole program has been created. We we're beating Walmart right now, Justin, which is really cool. We're <laughs> yeah. comparing the price. And when, you know, you're beating a company that one out of every $4 spent in the the world goes to Walmart and you can beat wow. them in price. You're doing something right. And you know, the numbers end up working out with yeah. that made this something that there's a, there's a market for what we're doing. And you know, with banner season and this relationship with the vault combining the, the knowledge of how to get the, the best responses with the marketing. You know what I mean? That's the key is yep. you don't want to just drop it out there. You've got to combine the, the templates with the messaging and the sequence and know how to work the consistency that you're going to be deploying certain marketing. And that's what we're teaching, you know, combined with better season is yep. Yep. how to build that uh, and train with what we're doing every single day. Exactly. I think one of the gaps, uh, marketing bowl and banner season right there. So he hit it on the head. So the banner season is, is the fulfillment house that has all of these things that you can do everything from a, a large uploaded list and, and be able to send this, this mass, you know, direct mailing campaign to yeah. the one offs where you can just click off and say, you know what? I need to send a postcard to this one person. And mm -hmm. I want a discount too, because usually when you do that, how much is it Justin? Like if you say, okay, I have a thousand list and then I have this one off. <laughs> yeah. What is the difference in pricing usually, right? Yeah. It's a lot of money oh, typically. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big difference. So yeah. when you're sending one offs, everybody's like, well, I don't want to send one offs right now. I don't want to send it to my 10 clients or yeah. send a greeting card over to my 10 clients to say, thank you so much for doing business with me because it's too expensive. Like a lot of people will won't do that because they don't want to sacrifice the, the dollars and cents. Right. You know? Yeah. So, so the goal is and with banner season is, you know, and the way we set it up is, is that doesn't matter anymore. 
You know what I mean? You're not, you can do a one-off and still get that big discount. You can do a large list and still get that big discount. I mean, that's the plus side of what, you know, Justin and Joe and DeMar have been able to put together on that side of it, paired up with us to be able to handle the training, the marketing, the templates. So people aren't just going out into a list blindly and say, Hey, well, I just want to send to this list. Okay. Well, you know, what, what kind of list do you have? What is your, what are you trying to do with this list? You know, are you trying to direct them over here? Are you trying to get them to a funnel? Are you, you know, those are the kind of things that we're going to be able to help on as far as the training is concerned is to say, look, if you have a list like this, this is how you should approach it. This is how you yeah. should marry it to a digital marketing site or something that's going to help you produce the type of results that you're really, really looking for. Like what type of sequences are going to best fit yeah. what you're trying to accomplish? How many touches? You know, yeah, there's how many impressions? There's, yeah, there's opportunities. There's contacts. There's clients that are existing yeah. in your database. But there's also, uh, you know, re-engagement campaigns. And so there's so many things that the marketing vault is bringing to the table that businesses are going out hiring consultants for twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars a year. Brad and I've consulted companies to just do that, to go from small to medium to high ticket. Uh, and you're getting that type of training by being part of the marketing vault and what we're doing here. And it's constant training, you know, learning from what we're doing, what we're deploying and what we're testing and what's being proven. And you can do it at, at any scale, Justin. That's what's really cool about this. And um, from the pricing to the products to the programming and everything that's been going into this, it makes it within reach of any size business from a one person operation to under enterprise. Yes. Yeah. Well, I love that. Now, one of the things like I went to the digital marketer conference this year, traffic and conversions. And one of the things that was like a big theme there was personalization. And like, how can we add more personalization to our marketing okay. campaigns? And one of the things that I think banner season does better than pretty much any other company out there is they've, they've created a way to do personalization on every product, every card, every, uh, every mug, you know, all these different ways where it's not like if you went to a promotional products company, yeah, you that. Products, <laughs> uh, but you have your name on the bottom. Whereas if I went yeah, to a yeah. promotional products company, I could send a thousand of those relatively cheaply, but I couldn't have my, every client's name on the bottom. I couldn't yeah. personalize them in a way that they're going to make them feel more special. It'd be just like my logo on a, on a mug versus, yeah. versus my logo and their name on the product, which I think is, I think that adds a, a certain value that, that really distinguishes what banner season does from all the other competitors out there. Cause there are other companies that are doing promotional products, but they're not yeah. doing it at that level. So can you talk a little bit about like how you see, the personalization aspect impacting these campaigns and, and like kind of the wow factor. Cause every time I send like a mug with somebody's name on it, it's getting shared on social media. I'm getting all this extra free, you know, free press, free, whatever you want to call it, free media because uh, they're, they're wanting to tell everybody all their friends about it. So tell me about that. Oh, man, that's, we can both go on for hours, but one thing that I know that, you know, being in the sports world and you yeah. know, coaching things like Brad does, you know, a lot, I see it from, you know, everybody getting a mug with a logo like this one is a participation award, right? Yep. But when you throw everyone's individual name on it, it yeah. jumps to a whole new level. Oh, yeah. It's no longer participating. You feel something. You feel wow. You feel earned. Yeah. You feel accomplished. You feel special. Mm -hmm. And that goes so far in what we teach in all the different trains inside the vault of how that goes for the different tiers of from building teams mm -hmm. to just starting out to thank yous to your welcomes yeah. to welcome back to, I mean, we can go on and on of how we use personalization because we've never been able to reach the personalization that we wanted to at the price that we yeah. can do it. That that's, that separates the yeah. banner season and the marketing vault from anyone. 100%, you know, because I mean, you got to think of it this way. Everybody's, I guess best subject a lot of the times is themselves. You know what I mean? Like they, they want to hear their names. They, that makes them feel a personal connection to whoever they're, they're doing business with. And that's exactly what this does. And it could be a one-off. It could be a shipment of a hundred of these things, but still have the ability to have your name, you know, on this, on this item, which is huge. So I 100% agree with you, Justin. And I think that's, that's really what we saw in banner season as well, you know, in, in doing this partnership is, you know, their ability to have that personal touch that in, in, in a world where everything is not personal at all, you know what I mean? Good old yeah. fashioned relationships or a good handshake that just doesn't exist anymore. So mm -hmm. I feel like 
okay, well, if you can't do the handshake like you used to and you're, and you're catering to thousands of clients across not just the U.S., but even international stuff like we've done, you know, you've got to add, you know, this is kind of the new handshake, you know what I mean, with, with that personal touch. This is, hey, you know what, I see you, I hear you, I appreciate you, thanks for doing business with me. So. Which, which really cool is that basically you can you could create a campaign the exact same way you were creating your email marketing campaigns in your CRMs like your um, your Salesforce your Infusionsoft whatever you're using your active campaign um, and you can just kind of add in the direct mail triggers so you can have these things auto delivered uh, as part of your automation sequences uh, it set this up in a way that is easy it's fast it's uh, you don't have to think about it. And all of a sudden, you're, you're going to see your social media uh, profile blowing up because you forgot you sent somebody a gift and they're going to be opening it and <laughs> telling you about it. That's what I've experienced. Um, some of the, so the marketing vault, beyond, beyond having access to both of you, which I'm going to talk more about in a little bit, but I'm going to come back to that. Everybody that's joining is also getting, they're getting bulk discounts on the products. They're getting discounts on the level of, uh, of postcards and cards that they send out. So I know there's two different levels. There's a silver level and there's a gold level. Um, the silver level, you're saving 10% on every single product in the banner season lot on every time yeah. you send one, which uh, will quickly, if, you, if you're sending at any kind of a mass volume, it's going to pay for itself relatively quickly. And the gold level is going to be paying 25% discounts on all these products. So again, um, depending on the volume that you're sending at, these, these things will pay for themselves too. So if you're, if you're, if you're going to be sending with any kind of significant volume, um, what's awesome about these programs is they pay for themselves and on top of that they're getting access to uh, a mastermind with you So is that gonna is that like a weekly mastermind a monthly mastermind? Tell, tell me a little bit about the mastermind component because I think I think when I hear about the marketing vault That's something that kind of gets missed, but I mean how many masterminds are people paying five hundred dollars thousand dollars a month to be a part of and um, And here's an opportunity to get it as a like a side benefit of something that's already an incredible benefit So let's talk about that and essentially, like it is a side benefit. That that's kind of the upside about it. It's just something that Chad and I still love to do. It's not something we have to do. I mean, the two levels pretty much speak for themselves, right? I mean, to get a twenty-five percent discount at the gold level, you know, me being a business owner, Chad being a business owner, at the end of the the, the month or at the end of the quarter, the bottom line is, is I want to save money. You know what I mean? I want my bottom line to be minus this many hundred dollars versus me working with this other guy down the street or Joe Schmo's printing, right? So. So really when it comes down to the marketing bolt, that is just the bonus. You know what I mean? So we're going to be doing one of these, you know, broadcasts probably once a week talking about, you know, this mail marketing piece or, you know, even some of our clients are like, Hey, look, I'm going to, I have this list. I, I'm going to be mailing out. What do you suggest I do on this list or, or what's, yeah. can you give me some ideas as some copy that I can put on the front of this postcard to be able to attract my my client's attention, you know what I mean? Or how many touches is it going to take for me to get this? You know, because you know, in direct, the direct mail mar marketing game, some of these guys will send out, like if there was a, it was a 300 mailer campaign, they'd send it out to 300 different people and that's it. And then they try to go into a new area. And that's just not the way marketing works. It's all about impressions, right? You have to have, like Chad was saying, auto responders, which is something that, you know, we have in the direct marketing world, which is something that's really unheard of, right? being able to send it out this first time, this next time, and then another time and, and follow it up with a message saying, hey, look, I just wanna make sure that you got your postcard. If I call you right now, Justin, I send out a few postcards and I said, hey, Justin, this is Brad giving you a call. Hey, I just wanted to make sure that you got that postcard in the mail, give me a call back. You're gonna be like, first off, who the hell is Brad? <laughs> Second, what postcard is he talking about? What are you gonna go do? I'm gonna check though, yes. You, I would You're going check. to check, yeah. exactly, which is the whole point is, hey, you know, postcards, attention, me, 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 look at me, look at me, right? Well, I just made it to where no matter what, if you haven't looked at it the first couple of times, I know this last ditch effort, you're going to look at it. Yeah, I might you even go to I mean? my trash. I might have, it might have ended up in the recycling bin. I might go back in and go, wait a minute, I want to see what he sent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so. what's really cool is going through different case studies in industry and bringing in uh, other industry leaders, too, uh, that are going through that are using the same tools, resources that we have at our fingertips and that they are using at their fingertips. and taking it down all the way to where, you know, Hey, I'm just, you know, a person that I'm trying to start my network marketing business. They maybe they want to do this. They want to do banner season as a network, you know, marketing, you know, and that type, that's the type of help. There is no business too small. There's no business too large. There's no messaging that, you know, we're not going to be able to work with, with you, but it's about converting and getting the most out of your monthly membership into the marketing vault because Regardless of what business you're in, you, you, 
you hit it earlier, Jesse, like it's just like one or two clients, you know, one a month probably is going to pay for it. And then yeah. as you start to see, people are going to, we want you to use your post cards and your, uh, your letters. And we want you to use that every single month. So you're getting not just the added savings, benefit, but you're generating a huge, you're maybe you're growing your database. Like, you know, that's a big thing in our world too is building databases, right? Cause that's value to a lot of people, but then there's converting those leads that are coming into your funnel. So there's always parts where you can maximize and use the, the 500, you know, postcards and stuff that you're getting per month in your membership where those can be divided into a three point, you know, three contact sequence or a two prong uh, sequence, you know, with a follow up. Those are the types of training things we're going to really dive into to really maximize your uh, return on investment in your business, let alone just the yeah. membership that's going to pay for itself. And I think really a I, I think of follow up as like um, as key, and you mentioned about impressions, and, and I think of like direct mail. I think of email too. Sometimes it's just like hitting the person at the right time because like I might open my in, my email box, my, not my email or my or my direct mail box one day, and just be kind of in a weird mood and just kind of like scanning really really briefly and throwing most of the stuff away. And then another day I might just be opening everything and reading it. So sometimes it's it's about hitting those impressions and and eventually you kind of catch somebody on the right day where they're looking they're, they're spending a little bit more attention, but if you're only sending one off and you and you're kind of doing that spray and pray approach, um, you're uh, you're missing out on that opportunity of follow up. And so uh, and, and I know that at some of the companies that I've worked with with CRMs they talk about it, it could take as many as seven follow ups sometimes uh, to convert somebody from step one to step two, not even necessarily from buying, but from just like getting somebody to open and, and download are. a link or click a link. Yeah. I guess somebody takes seven follow-ups. So um, yeah, if you're, if you're not, if you're, if you're doing a direct mail campaign, that's kind of just the one off and you're, you're praying that they respond to that one, you're, you're missing that opportunity that I, um, that I think is what banner season is providing. Yep. That's exactly right. You know, and, and, and that's the good thing about direct mail sometimes is you hit it too, is even with me, I mean, there's a lot of times where I don't open up an email. Yeah. I just don't, you know what I mean? I, I see all these emails. I like, Oh, okay, you know, skimming through and trying to find the ones that I really need to open up. Um, but at the end of the day, when you get direct mailers, like you always, I, I know me personally, and I know most people that I know naturally go through their mail because you have to, right? Yeah. Like you, okay, okay, here, 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 here. Like even if they're not looking for your direct mail piece and they skim through it, they still see the whole message there. Yep. No matter what. I mean, yeah. that is the cool thing about direct mail is it, number one, it's it's been cyclical for years, but now it's becoming a thing where it is very important to do direct mail. Yeah. Um, number one, but number two, your message gets seen even when you're not trying to open it because it's a postcard. It's already open. It's already there. It'd be like yeah. waving your phone and the emails open in front of your face. You're like, and you're you're skimming through. You know, you're just pushing it over and it's already open. Well, you skimmed through it and you saw it, and maybe there was something in that that copy where you're like, oh wait, maybe I better read this. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's and, basically but, a guaranteed impression. Whereas, like, email could end up yes. in a junk box. It could end up in your spam box. It could just be not open. There's a lot of things that can happen with email. With direct mail, you're yeah, you're gonna. I mean, even if I'm gonna, even if I'm skimming fast, I'm still gonna see it, and it's gonna register subconsciously. It's like a Coca-Cola yes. bill or something. Right. I mean, I don't even know I saw it, maybe, but <laughs> but maybe yeah. the third time I see it, it's like it's like, oh, I recognize this now. And it, it has a little bit more more meaning attached to it. So there's that that extra sense of value. Uh, one other thing I wanted to, to mention, though, is that like you guys doing the mastermind here as part of the Marketing Vault program, uh, I'm going to go on a, on a, out on a limb and say that you normally charge more than $100 to sit down with private clients and answer questions and yes. do that kind of stuff. So, I mean, can we, can we kind of talk about like the actual value that people are getting from just having access to both of you? Hey, let, let me ask you this before <laughs> Chad answers, Justin. What? <laughs> So somebody that that's, I mean, we kind of let you know a little bit about what we've done, people we've traveled with. Um, and with those people that are out there speaking, we've consulted with them, like all the things that we've told you, what would you think somebody like us would charge for a sit down meeting to be able to train individuals one on one? I mean, the, the lowest I could even imagine would be like a $1,000 and that'd be a short meeting. But I mean, I'm thinking like 10 to 15 grand is probably more accurate and possibly more. Yeah. yeah. And so there's, you know, and a lot of times, you know, we're going to consulting companies that and individuals that are their minimum targets, you know, are talking, you know, seven, eight figure yearly businesses, yeah. and, you know, dissecting every piece of their 
lead flow from the start to the beginning and then, you know, going high ticket, you know, there, there's a lot of things that go into it. And we love doing that because again, we're doing it in multiple companies that we have. And I think that, you know, from our experience is, you know, being part of this, another business and growing this one too, gives it that fire. Now, will we do it forever? I mean, probably and we're, you know, who knows how long we do it for, you know, we've got the time to do it right now. And, you know, we love seeing the success of people. And again, this is a limited thing too, by the way, I don't, there's not, this isn't just some unlimited enrollment into the vault and those types of things. This is designed for people that are getting off the ground right here in the beginning. I think everybody, you know, the people have, certain people have access to it. Yeah. It's very limited, you know, for the amount of people that we can have right now, because, you know, it does take time of working with these businesses and consulting them right now. You know, and one of the things about it too is, with all the people that are going to be in the vault, like we even have people come to us and they're like, you know what, Brad, Chad, like we don't have a business to market. We don't like, I want to be a part of banner season, but yeah. like yeah. for, for the, the free mailers that I get or the free greeting cards, like how do I use that? Like to benefit me outside of the affiliate side of it, because you know, a lot of people are affiliates and they're coming in and, and they're wanting to kind of resell as an affiliate to make some money too. Because think about it this way, Justin, I mean, even if you signed up for, you know, the, the silver program and you signed up 10 people, your marketing is free outside of postage. I mean, that's how many, how many people can say that they get free 500 direct mailers, you know what I mean? Per month. And it's free outside of postage. Like that is crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not including what you can do on the other level, you know, which is the gold level. And you, you sign up, you know, 20, 30 more people. And it's the same thing. That's free. You know what I mean? Yeah, everyone you know, so you can actually visit with yeah. you needs what we're doing. I, it's just yeah, that's the only thing I can see is everyone that has a business or has clients or David, they need to do this. You know what I mean? Just from yeah. you know a couple of the group calls that we do in the vault. I mean, just from one or two of those calls is going to be worth its way. We talk about colors, we talk about languaging and scripts and fonts, and people are going to be blown away by what the money that we've invested and spent. Cause I mean, you know, we didn't mention this earlier, but we spend, I don't know if we talk about, you know, tens of thousands of dollars a month and a week, depending on if we have events going or if we're doing, you know, real estate or if we're, you know, generating leads or for clients or for offers and what we see our other clients doing. So, cool. so much is going through that are case studies and testing and testing and testing to pass on to the people that are in this limited group. You're, you can't miss it. Like with the training and support that you get with a membership like this, yeah, if it's yeah. building up your downline, your teams, you know, you're going to be blown away. And I just, cause you're glossing over it kind of, but I, I mean, I, I just want to emphasize that when you're talking about like colors and fonts, like that means that, yeah, you've, you've sent out probably thousands, if not tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of postcards and tested which colors get better responses, which fonts get better responses, which, uh, you know, how do I get better open rates? So that kind of stuff is invaluable. I mean, you've actually done the date, you have the data. So to share, we, to share we, that kind of stuff. All those conferences you go to oh, too. Yeah, hey, traffic there. conversion. I was there last year, yeah, man. Yeah. So maybe that's where we bet. That could yeah, be too. It's possible. Yeah. We can't even tell you the number of we've spent on all the trainings and testing and doing it, but you know, we wouldn't be where we're at and wouldn't have been able to hit our, you know, seven, eight figures every single year, as long as we've ever been in business doing this for the last 15 years to be able to pass that on, which is really cool. Can you give a, like a, a example of a client that you added kind of like direct mail to and got like a quick kind of quick win, profound result? Like you have a, you have a sample, like kind of um, case study story you could share real quick. Like a, a case study to emphasize what or elaborate on what you're yeah, saying. I'm, trying to think well, I'm just thinking of like, is there like a, is there like a, a quick testimonial story? For like to get leads in or something for, for, for their business. That'd be a good one. I mean, yeah, for their business. I'm just thinking of like a story where they added direct mail in and uh, all of a sudden they, they got a certain result. Here, I'll give you an idea right now. So a guy out of California, he had two market areas that he was doing direct mail marketing in to generate mm -hmm. leads for motivated sellers. He's a real estate investor as well. $7,500 per market. Okay. That's $15,000 a month. He was spending on direct mail. Marketing. Wow. Okay. We talked to him about this. It's and, and let him know that, Hey, look for, for $97, you could get 500 free mailers. Plus, you know, you get the discounts on top of it, or you could do the, um, the, the gold where it's really 10 cents for a postcard, which is insane. Plus your 500, you know, postcards on top of it. 
he's like, are you kidding me? He's like, based on the amount that I'm sending out and based on what I'm doing right now, I'll pay less. So, so like I said, he's paying $15,000. He'll pay probably about $2,500. So the math on that is insane. He's saying what, four, five thousand bucks, yeah. five thousand bucks, just a month, <laughs> a month, hey, a month. per month. That yes. is per month. So, you know, the savings and the, and the reason why, you know, this all made sense at the beginning is, is we wanted to bring a savings that is unbeatable. You know what I mean? And, and banner seasons have the ability to do that um, specifically for, for those kind of clients or even other clients that are just starting out. That's why it's so beneficial is if whether, and Chad keeps emphasizing, like whether it's you're starting out or you're, you're, you're in the middle or you're like this guy that is a very successful investor, you're going to save money. And at the end of the day, that's what it's about. Like if I'm going to be making this money in, I want to save money on top of it. I want to get the most bang for my buck. And that's a, you know, that's a great story with someone spending a lot of money. There's no, I can think of that, you know, we cut a marketing budget, you know, from several hundred down to 97, you know, dollars a month. And you're talking about generating, you know, five to $7,000 a month income for just, you know, a first person that has never really done anything in their business, you know, where we can go to the essential oil world where, you know, instead of trying to get your friends and family to come into a room all the time, that referral list, they're getting invited to something. Then that the person wants to get them in front of them where instead of in the living room, they're in their small hotel room. Yeah. With a, a little bit of a budget, they do that. But you're talking about getting, you know, 60, 70 people into a room now, where now they're generating, you know, 70, $80,000, you know, to their business of starting a network marketing company. So, you know, there's different ways based off of the, what type of business you're doing. And you can be essential oils to uh, just your messaging, you know, and we don't, you know, you're not, some people don't want to market what they're doing. You know, one of those things is, you know, Hey, I've got a, you know, one of the, another company, you know, person now they have a company, but let's say a person talks about, uh, age, you know, that's, that's a big common thing out there. Like, Oh, yeah. you know, Hey, you want to be look younger or be younger. Right. You know, that's pretty common, Justin, that we hear, but it's just the messaging that we say, it's not, Hey, come to this network marketing event about how to look younger. It's changing up their conversation a little bit and letting the message transfer over. Like we're going to be teaching the ball, but that messaging that we tweaked was, have you ever seen someone that looks 20 years younger than they really are? You're like, yeah. Do you want to know how they do that? Yeah. Yep. Come sit down and talk with me and let me show you exactly what those people are doing to make themselves look 20 years younger than they really are. Versus, hey, I got this new lotion you can rub on yourself and then, you know, we can tell your friends and family. Total different conversation, right, yeah. Justin? Completely. It's conversation. It's the consulting of working with them and tweaking them about the messaging to attract the right type of people that they convert to you know, a product sell or something else. That was another example as I can think of. It's just the languaging that people ask us about. I need to tweak my message. It's not, people aren't converting. Yep. One thing we haven't even talked about is um, the, the other side of this is like sending thank you cards, sending, um, sending welcome letters, um, things like that. Cause like, at, at digital mar at the digital marketer conference, but to cite that one more time, I remember Perry, Perry Belcher did a talk where he was talking about membership sites and how adding a tangible product as uh, as part or not a tangible any tangible touch like a tangible touch point um, along with a digital membership site like increased retention tremendously. I, I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but they were very very high, um, and so that is an opportunity that with those postcards, they don't all have to be prospecting postcards. Some of those can be going out to your existing clients and just saying, thank you for your purchase. Thank you for being a part of this, uh, as well as other gifts and, and things like that too, which can increase the retention, the relationship, the chance of referrals. Like there's, there's all kinds of other doors that this opens up too. Um, I wanted to kind of finish up on this side. And so have you talk a little bit about that and then we'll kind of wrap up. So. Yep. And, and as far as the gold side of it, the one cool thing about it is your, your next level is your greeting cards, right? So yeah. the initial part is the postcards because they're the cheapest. You want to make that initial contact. You want to start that, you know, that first handshake meeting somebody, right? That's what a postcard is to me. Yeah. But when you give somebody a hug, that's the greeting card side of it, right? And with, when the gold package, you actually get 500 greeting cards as well to, to not just get the relationship, but to maintain and build the relationship which is what the greeting card side of it is for as well. Yeah. So that greeting card and the thank you is really important. We talked that a little bit more to people that are actually, you know, 
working, getting leads and, you know, working with, you know, taking prospects into clients and how to solidify that relationship and how to use the different cool things that you have access to in the vault that are personalized, like the brownies, like, you know, I, we can go on and on the little boxes that are customized. Yeah, to, I mean, yeah. you know, like my briefcase that I take with my name on it, you know, I have my little briefcase. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> you know, so that I put all my business cards in, right? So there's so many things that we go to, do, but the greeting card, you know, and, you know, or thank you cards, you know, we call it, it's the, the way that we use those for clients and your retention, it, you, the feeling that you get, um, after doing something, and, and it, it goes across all industries. You know, we're really being helped like car salesmen, car dealerships, to people that have signed up for a membership into something like you mentioned very much. We we do we talk about the same things and how to do that, or uh, to keep your auto ships going. You know, on certain things, if you've got clients in a downline, they're doing that certain timing that you want to release those every 30, 60, 90 days, or whatever the the timeline is to use that to make sure, or you know when they're coming up at the end of memberships or their end of their billing cycle or, you know, little tweaks like that, you're going to learn so much more in the vault as we teach you, you know, how to be prepared for people that are on auto billing where their credit card might be expiring pretty soon, Justin. And most people don't think about that. There's a little yeah. nugget, you know, how to make sure you give them something really cool that tweak before yeah. their cards expiring. So they make sure they're re up and they don't want to miss out. Right. Very so, true. Yeah. Lot, be great. Yeah, just those little touches can make big, big differences in, in terms of retention, and that can add a lot to the bottom line or take away from the bottom line if you miss out on that too. Right, right. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's been it's been awesome chatting with you both. Um, so the the banner season membership vault just went live. Um, when can we expect the first kind of mastermind session from you with that vault? Well, we plan to do that. So uh, we're going to be introducing a little bit of it tonight. Um, but come. What, what's today? Let's see, Wednesday. So come Monday of, of next week, we're going to start it. So we like to try to do it on a Monday. Um, start it off at the beginning of the week, you know, talk about a, a mail marketing piece, different types of postcards. But, you know, one of the cool things is a lot of the people that are going to be in the group are going to be talking about their business or talking about, well, what would you say if this or what would you say if that? And those are things that we could actually talk about uh, live while we're on there as well. So we'll usually present like some sort of mail marketing piece that that is worth, it's proven, that's working really well, that's converting really well. And then we'll talk about, um, like I said, other, what to yeah. say is, you know, what to say if the client says this, or, you know, whether it be kind of the affiliate side of this business, or if they're trying to just advertise to their own personal clients. And it's all about their, the members' businesses. That's the key point here. It's all about the members of this special, you know, group that we have. It's about your businesses and how we can help you grow your businesses in the areas that you want to grow it in. It's not about our business. It's about what we do to help and serve you. Yep. Now, what would you say to somebody that says that I don't have a big enough list to be a part of this? Because I, I think that there's still value, even if you even if you don't oh. think you're going to use 500 postcards in the beginning. I think there's still value to join. What would you say to that? I'd say how many? How big is your list? First off, and if you said it was 100, I'd say that's awesome because most people have the the idea that, Hey, look, I need 500 people on a list to be able to market to it. I say, that's perfect. Great. Let's market to them five times over to a hundred versus yeah. 500 one time. Yeah. That's the trick. So I don't care how big somebody's list is. I mean, getting a list is actually not really hard these days to get, you know what I mean? It's just, which lists are you going to target would be the better, you know, or I have this list and this is the list. This is what the list is about. How would I approach this list? would be the better question, right? Yeah. Not necessarily, because it's not how big your list is, it's, it's what is gonna be the best way to approach that list. And I think two people that don't have a list, it's actually even more reasons to get into the group because <laughs> you're going to build your list. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, this is the perfect way to start. You haven't messed up, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're not going to mess up. We're gonna help you get learn how to build your list. Starting from ground, if you have one person, it's all it takes, and that one person's you, by doing it and being part of that group, that's the biggest thing. It just being you starting, and we'll help you build your list. That, awesome. that, that's the key, is teaching you how to build it, cultivate it. That's what all this does. Uh, the whole part of the vault and everything inside of, you know, there with Banner Season, it's about how to build, you know, a list and how to maintain it and keep it going. Because a lot of people have lists, but, you know, they don't, they don't keep, they don't nurture their list, I guess the word we're looking at. They don't build it. You're going to learn all of that, how to build it, how to nurture it, how to retain it. Uh, that's why you need to be inside there with us. 
Love that. Love that. Okay. So thank you. Thank you both for, uh, for doing the interview with me. I'm going to have, uh, I'll have in the show notes, I'm going to have how you can get started with the, uh, with the banner season marketing vault. So if anyone wants to get started with that, we'll have that all available in the show notes. Uh, thank you, Brad. Thank you, Chad. It's been a pleasure. Hey, thank, thank you so Justin. much for having us, Justin. Awesome.